Hi, in this video I'll explain the basics of multipathing. Multipathing is having multiple paths to access the storage device. This is done to have redundancy and to avoid storage outage in case if any of the path fails. So this is my setup. I have two machines. One will act as a storage device where I'll configure iSCSI LUNs and targets. On the other machine, I'll configure iSCSI initiator to be able to access and mount those LUNs. On both machines, I have two NIC cards dedicated for iSCSI traffic. So these are the two NIC cards, iSCSI 1 and iSCSI 2. Similarly, on client side, I have iSCSI 1, iSCSI 2. These are the two IP addresses of those iSCSI cards on server side. It is 20.0.0.10 and 10.0.0.10. On client side, it is 20.0.0.20 and 10.0.0.20. So first, let's configure iSCSI LUNs and targets. Before that, I'll create a folder to keep those iSCSI learn files basically we are going to create two virtual disk or the VHD files which will act as iSCSI learns so in the iSCSI target software I'll create a virtual disk nuns backslash disk one dot VHD. I'll put the size as two zero four ten two zero four eight MB, that's two GB. Disk one, that's the description I'll put. Next finished. Similarly, I'll create another virtual disk. Backslash disk two dot phd. Again, two GB two. After this, I'll create targets. I'll give uh, the name as target one and I'll present this target one to the IP address ten dot zero dot zero dot twenty. That is the iSCSI one IP address of my target machine. I'll create another target. It will be target two. Same way, I'll present it to twenty dot zero dot zero dot twenty. So I have my two targets now. Now on each in each target, I'll add both those disks. I'll say add existing virtual disk. I'll select both the disks. Same way on target 2, add existing virtual disk. I'll add both the disks. So I have both the disks added in both the targets. One target is presented to IP address 10.0.0.20 and the other one to 20.0.0.20 so uh, this is done from storage side now on the client side and on the client side I'll configure iSCSI initiator so to configure iSCSI initiator I'll run iSCSI CPL that will run my iSCSI initiator there under this iSCSI initiator I'll put the 
storage device IP address that is the two IP address that we have configured on the storage side that's 10.0.0.10 and 20.0.0.10 so I'll put one of the IP address and say quick connect it will detect the target that was presented again I'll put the another IP address 20.0.0.10 so so now I've added both the targets and now if I go to device manager and expand disk drives I can see four SCSI disks now practically I have just two SCSI disks or two high SCSI disks but it is showing as four disk now this is because each of the NIC card iSCSI 1 and iSCSI 2 can see both the disks so that's why OS assumes as if there are total four disks 